Hi, this is Corey from Tales from a Polk County Girl, and in this book review video, I'm going to be talking about a new cookbook I got, Queso. Who doesn't love Queso? Uh, queso, regional recipes for the world uh, for the world's favorite chili cheese dip. Let me get close so you can see that. It is by Lisa Fain. I want to say that's her name. I hope I'm not mispronouncing her name. She is a blogger at The Homesick Texan. I will uh, put a link down to her blog below. And she is a queso fanatic. Um, there are 55, over 55 recipes in this book that are, that are queso. And I've had fun looking through it. Um, our friends, some of our friends have had fun looking through it and we're going, sorry, and we have all decided we're going to have queso night and everybody's going to be given a different queso recipe and we're all going to bring them and like eat our weight in tortilla chips and everything and, and my husband's been patiently waiting for me to film this video so he can take a look at this book. Um, I'm just going to show you the table of contents. So yeah, there's a lot in this book. Uh, Chili con queso, the early years, and she goes into the history and where um, queso was first used. Um, uh, not only the term queso when it first showed up, but also the history of it and how it varies from the Texas-Mexican border to the Texas... Uh, Louisiana border to all other parts of Texas and it is based mainly in Texas if you uh, haven't if that uh, didn't sink in um, some of the ones that are in here are quite interesting like her quirky queso section the first two in there are vegan queso recipes and I had completely forgotten after reading the table of contents as I'm reading through the book that those were going to be in there. So when I got there, I'm looking at it going, vegan queso. That sounds like an oxymoron. One recipe is completely, there are two of them. One recipe is completely plant-based and the other one does use vegan cheese. So she doesn't leave vegans out. Um, there's Indian queso, Greek queso, uh, it, crawfish queso, which that one comes from uh, the Texas-Louisiana border. I'm not going to sit here and read it all to you. Um, her queso in the wild is funny because uh, El Paso style huevos rancheros. So the fact that queso is poured over eggs seemed odd to her. And I'm like, how else do you eat huevos rancheros? But whatever. Um, and the pictures are really good. I think she did the photography herself as well. No. Aub uh, a woman named Aubrey Prick Pick, did the uh, food photography. And she did a very good job. This was a very nice book to read. It was quick. I mean, I would just read through a couple recipes each night which was a bad idea because then I got hungry. What I do like is uh, she goes through the different types of chilies that are used, that can be used in case in uh, queso, whole chilies, ground chilies, fresh chilies. Then she gets into the cheese and she uh, flat out says, it's like, you're gonna see where it says it calls for processed American cheese and processed block cheese. The processed block cheese, as we all know, is Velveeta. So, only a case. It's actually more surprising when you don't see American cheese or Velveeta called for in the recipe. And those are the ones that's like, hmm, okay, somebody either didn't know about Velveeta or doesn't like Velveeta. She goes into more cheeses. Yeah, she's got an entire paragraph donate or dedicated to American cheese and brick processed cheese. The pictures are just lovely. 
Uh, the history. Yeah, I read that. Chili con queso, the early years. I uh, was. I'll just read this part. In the late 1500s, Spanish explorers arrived in the area around what is known today as El Paso, Texas, along with along the Mexican-American border. With them, they brought livestock, such as cows and goats, which that part of the world had never seen. Dairy was not known to the Native Americans, as their diet was made up of indigenous ingredients such as corn, squash, and chilies. From that point, however, as the old world connected with the new, it was perhaps inevitable that one day cheese would be paired with chilies and a culinary alliance would be born. I kind of like that. I really did. Um, queso by name did not actually appear in cookbooks until about the 1800s. So, and that she goes all through that. And it's very uh, educational food history, nutritional anthropology, nutrition anthropology wise. It's very good. It's, it's, this is not just a cookbook. Um, we've only tried one of the recipes in here. And I'm looking for it now. Um, she has uh, two cases in here. One that uses pulled pork and one that calls for beef brisket. So we made the brisket queso. But ironically, when we did the brisket queso, the brisket we had was Kobe brisket, and the guys didn't want to sacrifice any Kobe brisket for a queso. So we also had pulled pork. So instead of making the pulled pork queso, we made the brisket queso but used pulled pork. If that made sense. And it worked. It really did. And my only uh, suggestion is where it says a uh, pico de gallo for a topping. We found that that kind of made it a little watery, like the water started to separate out of the pico de gallo and um, it didn't really do anything for the queso. Like the water just sat on top of everything. And yeah, so we actually scraped the pico de gallo off. So, and used it for something else, but you don't need it as a topping, but that's why it's optional. Um, some of the things she talks about are interesting. Uh, where was one of the other ones? The chori queso, which I thought was very cute. It's a uh, it's a stingy white cheese studded with tangy chorizo sausage, and and it's very popular in Laredo, Texas. So. That, uh, that sounds like one we're going to have to try. And we were given, when Philip and I got married, we were given the three mini crock pots that are like all together. It's like one, one, and one. So it looks like. Um, and then I have another small crock pot as well. So I can do like four quesos if I want. So. Yeah. Um. The queso in the wild, other than it being like huevos rancheros, soft cheese tacos, chili con queso, so, uh, sausage balls. This is uh, a very interesting cookbook. I usually don't go for um, single theme cookbooks. Like I like it to have a variety of recipes, but and being a librarian, I know I'm not supposed to do this. And I tell my students all the time, don't do it. But when I went on blogging for books to choose my next book review, uh, book to review, I saw this cover and immediately wanted it. So the cover design people at the publishing company, they did their job properly. Um, I judged the book by its cover and decided I wanted it. So, and that's what the back of the book looks like. I will put the ISBN number and an Amazon link down in the description so that you can go check it out for yourself. Um, I did forget to say at the beginning of this video, um, and I apologize, I should have done this. Uh, this is a sponsored post. It, I uh, am reviewing this book 
this book for bloggingforbooks.com and ex I, um, I get this book in exchange for a review and video on it. So I will put that somewhere either in the title or in the description. So I know I'm supposed to say that first and I forgot and I apologize. But it's still a good book. Um, I'm not saying that it's good just because I got it for free. I'm not. I'm not like that. Um, if you've watched some of my other book review videos, you know I, I'm not like that. So check it out if you're a Queso fan. Um, it's not just melt some Velveeta and add a can of chili. It's now let's dice up some onions. No, let's saute some garlic. Like it's an they're actual recipes. So it's pretty good. So check it out. I'll talk to you guys later.